Okay, this is to give a better idea of how to optimize your games in Unreal Engine, especially for if you're working in VR, which requires a lot of optimizing. What I do is, one thing I do is I create a level like this, and it has all the objects in my game that are sitting in here. And well, I mean, this is an older version of the game, so there's not as many as there is now, but I had to go back to find this one because these are not optimized. So, okay, so we're in the unlit version, and of course we have our lit version, which is this bluish thing that goes on. So, unlit. So, yeah, so you come up here to unlit, and then you have these options here under optimization view mode, which is awesome because these things help you out a lot. Uh, go to light complexity. Of course, there's not going to be much light complexity because I don't have a lot of lights in here. And light map density, which is, of course, how um, optimized your things are for light maps. This orange crap that you see here, this is anything that's movable. You'll see, like, this thing here is a, just a mesh. So it shows up. It's a static mesh, so it shows up with the right color. And the colors are um, telling you how optimized they are. So green is like super optimized, red is not. So you can see this one down here, red is not optimized at all. Uh, and it's because I'm using one texture that covers this entire thing and it gave priority to that. I don't know why. All right, so this here is a static object. That is why it's getting these colors right why it looks blue and green and everything else and these objects here the the guns the the orange things okay so like this painting here right, even though it's part of the cabinet let's click on something else there we go go into the painting inside the player cabin right here so this here is a movable object so yeah, it's a movable object, and that is why it's showing up as that puke color right there. So anything that's movable is not going to give you these colors. It's only things that are you know, static, right? so they have to be static for them to static for them to actually give you the colors that they're supposed to be, right? And this is just about shadows so how detailed the shadows you want to have on these things are but since I don't have any shadows but I still don't want to be calling in a huge light map because that it'll still call it in even though um, you're not asking for shadows it'll still call it in so yeah go in and check these out and then you know you can set them back to the way you wanted them before I'm not sure why I had it as mobile but yeah so pew colored is that all right, so that's light map density. And, oh, you can set this in several places, actually, light map density. You Light, so you get the light map right here. So it's automatically set at 64, which is something that you can set inside the uh, preferences for your um, project. So you can say you want a maximum of such and such or a minimum of such and such. And here you can override it. So I can say I don't want it to be 64. I want it to be, say, 8 or something like that. And that'll drop it down and then you'll have something else. Here's a cast shadow. right? So you can do the light map resolution here. Or you can do it in the object itself. Actually, let's delete that. Be in the object. Let's see, light, RGH. Inside the object itself, you'll find the light map density here. So it says minimum light map resolution is 256, is what's set here. Light map resolution is 64. So this is general settings. So you can do it here, or you can do it inside the blueprint, and you can do it in the settings for your project. Go back to this. Right. All right. So now shader complexity. This bright green you can see down. It's bright green, which you can see down here. So this is very good, right? And of course, gets to extremely bad. 
and you don't want bad you want good especially if you're working in VR because VR needs everything to be in this bright green area here so yeah you want to stay in this area here not in this area here so I did find a couple of issues which were kind of interesting in this there. so you can see certain things are this color this I still have no idea why this shows up as like a checkerboard thing the red is not to worry about because you never see those those are turned off during the game this is a worrisome these are worrisome right and I spend a lot of time in this area here so here I can show you this machete let's go there and I will open them up and the problem here is the material so this material here if I go here and I click on the material there all right so details panel over here so if you click on this here and this will open up and I'll tell you all the different parts here up in this area here you want to up in this area here you want to type rough or rough. so see it says fully rough Fully rough is extremely important when you're dealing with uh, VR. So if I click on this and make it fully rough, it means it's not looking at any of the specular or any of the metallic stuff at all anymore. So now it's ignoring all specular and roughness apply. And we'll see now, bright green. So you get this beautiful bright green thing which puts it in the very very good area so you want all of your textures that you're using if possible to be bright green and really the only way to get the super bright green is to go fully rough so it means clicking on each of these objects browsing to the asset checking out the um, material that it's using and of course clicking on that doing R O to get to fully rough yep there you go so click on this and accept and now the axe hmm? huh, that's interesting oh right okay yeah so this is another issue that I found which is kind of odd uh, let's all right let's uh, okay so this is another thing you can do textures this is simply because I didn't import a normal for this. There was none. So this is just a smooth blue color. I put that into the normals area. Now I do not know why this works, but now when I go back, because it has a normal map, it's suddenly green and it's not this weird checkerboard color. And again, I don't know why that does it, but uh, it does make the computer happier All right so anyway you have to go through and so here's another one and what I did before was I just changed this to a um, paper there's like a paper normal somewhere around here so I just added that in there All right so going through and making sure that everything in your shots hey like these this one here it's another one so it has that same problem so I go through windmill browse to asset and open that guy up and then look for the look for the um, textures here's the two textures it's using one of them is the rotation one to this is the rotation one here so yeah the rotating one does not have a normal map so if I go in here and go to normals just zoom drag that in over here. here so I was thinking before you know the less things you have going on over here the better it's going to perform but apparently apply now we go back see nice and bright green don't know why that works um, but adding a normal on it makes it super happy and you can see the ground plane doesn't have that and there's a couple of other things which are dark here like this guy here See if I can figure out what's causing him to be dark. I think he has like a weird, a weird texture, like something that's combining a bunch of other things together. Uh, let's see, oak log. And 
Yeah. So he's got one of these weird things that somebody has done where it's all added together. And I don't know how to undo all of this. So the best way, the easiest way to do this, especially if it's just a simple object like that, is to right click on it and go down to Merge Actors. Mm. Click on them. And here, Merge Actors. That's what you're looking for. And of course, it'll open up this window here. Bring that down. Now, it'll ask you if you want all the LEDs. You don't need all the LEDs. You just go use a specific one, and then you can actually do some neat stuff. So here, zero, you want the, the best LED that you can get. And then Merge Materials, yes. Right, that's something that you want. And then when you scroll down, you can choose what types of materials you want in there. You want the normal map, the t other things. So I normally just click the normal map and the regular map. So I get both. And you can choose the size. So it's like 1024, 512 by 512 or whatever. And then you just merge actors. And it'll tell you what you want. Uh, let's go to map tiles and obstacles and stick it in here. And it'll be called merged something or other. So let's just call this log and there and then save it and I'll save it out it doesn't automatically close the window now <coughs> there is some weirdness that happens in here um, a lot of times it will will name things uh, differently and now there's a, the log you're not going to use this material but if you do delete it it will automatically delete the other ones which is kind of odd so what I do is I just go in here and I do a create material because that's too tall of a window so create material and then it'll create one here and it normally creates it with the same exact name as the mesh so it'll pop up next to the mesh alright so now open this window up and I will break it off so one of the cool things about this is you end up with a um, uh, texture here that you want and it's a combined texture of all the other textures so you're only using one texture on the object so it's one less call to worry about and then I click on this and I go to rough or ooh, there we go so fully rough yes and apply save pink and now You'll see nothing's changed. Well, why not? Because I haven't used this object yet. So let's go back into this guy here. Open him up. Uh, where are you? All right. Okay. So here's the log, and here is the log object, and here is the log. So I'm going to put this mesh in here now. Bink. There we go. And it's automatically using the mesh that it was assigned but I'm going to change that to this material assign you here yeah and actually I can go back to this guy here and in his object I can change the material here that way it's not calling and re uh, recalling stuff so there will be a connection in here if even if you're not using this material ever in your game it'll still call that in and it will then switch it to the one that you assigned it so that is a little bit of lag time that you're gonna have it's microseconds but it's still it's something then you want to nip away each little tiny thing if possible so here we have this and this assigned to each other right and you still can't delete this yet so if I log out of this file and I come back in then I can delete it but right now they're all attached so all of these files are attached so if I delete one of them then the other ones will delete. even though I'm not using this one if I delete it it'll go away so now you can see the log is green it is bright green which is a beautiful color right the most beautiful color ever so you want all of your textures on all of your objects to be this beautiful bright green. And you can see this one here, uh, this log is doing the same thing that the other log dot because I got it from the same set of uh, downloaded from the marketplace. And so yeah, that one there will also have the same problem, which I'll have to do a merge object and dump. And see this one here, uh, obviously it's, I think it's one of those ones that doesn't have a normal. Go here, browse. Camper, uh, go to the mesh, 
Now let's go straight to the material, shall we? Bink. All right. Yeah, say no normal. Uh, let's give it a normal. Uh, is there a camper normal? Let's do a search for that, shall we? Content. Here. And do camper A A M. And no, there is no normal for the camper. All right, so I will do the same thing I did before with the other one. Just give it that metal one. Uh, M E T. And uh, let's do a texture. And just there's a metal normal. So it's a smooth normal. So the smooth normal won't change anything. If you put some crazy wooden normal on there, it's going to make it all bumpy looking. Because that's what normals do. There we go. Bink. And here to uh, our O. Fully rough, it's already set on fully rough. I go back in, and now look, there it is. All nice and pretty green. Okay, so the house still is not. I mean, I'm not going to go through all the house as well right now, but uh, yeah, I had to go through each of these in the file and get them all done the same way. Now, that's one of the steps that you can do to get things looking nice. Another thing to increase all of your speed is to you can see all the materials I have here, right? So let's just go into a metal material here. So they're gonna look like this, right? And so you can see this one is 4096 by 4096. I mean it's a huge, it's 4K. Massive. And you don't want that, uh, especially for small objects or, I mean, load time. This is going to kill your load times. So unless you're doing something on a giant screen uh, or filming it super, super close, this is not going to be good. So three is generally good. Shrink it down. So 512 by 512 makes it look a lot nicer. Right? Especially for my game, which everything is going to get kind of grayed out anyway because of the fog. Um, it's not supposed to be super beautiful. So if I go back to lit here, right? So I mean, this is what it's going to look like in the game. So I mean, you're not going to need that type of detail uh, 4K here, especially when you're flying by this super fast. Right? I mean, this is plenty of detail for this. All right, so shader complexity. All right, so that's another thing to do. Each one of your materials, you want to go through all of your materials and drop them down here, and you can see which ones are messed up. This is actually another step that I wanted to go over. Statistics. All right, so in this level, all right, there's, I mean, it's got everything in it. So I can go over to this panel. You can see here's the content browser, and this, I'm going to actually zoom in on that. You know, the content browser, which is your standard content browser, and of course you can hamburger it or not. I prefer having this because I can select things faster. Message login statistics. Statistics window should always already be open. If it's not, then you can go up to the top and drag it in and pop it open. All right. And this here is super, super helpful. It's another step in optimizing things. So you can see everything that's inside of your scene and what it is. Um, the size of it, right? So the size of the mesh and the size of the material. So those two things you can get out of here. You won't be able to see the size of like the blueprint or anything like that, but you get enough information in here to start chopping and chopping away at things that you don't need. And it tells you how many of those things you have. So some triangles, right? So how many triangles do you have on an object? So, I mean, this object here, which is it's the um, Cargo central. All right, so uh, twenty thousand. All right, for the bed. Uh, okay, so let's go to the bed. All right, this is. All right, I do not need twenty thousand on this guy here. I mean, it's just not needed. I go over here to my LODs. So this is going to be extremely important for reducing um, the cost of rendering because the base pass whenever you do a base pass which is the you know combining all the stuff together and putting it it has to grab everything so the big thing that draws on the base pass is how many vertices are in the shot so if you have a million vertices the base pass is going to cost a lot of 
time and you want to reduce that so having four vertices is going to be a hell of a lot better so in this case here this guy's 20,000 which is a huge waste because I don't really need that anyway during the game this isn't in there so it's not a huge deal because it's not going to be a constant threat uh, it gets deleted or just as the game starts but I mean as, as the players rotate their head around inside the cabin I don't want this thing to be causing lag so I can go over here to LODs now custom is what you click first okay and then you go down here to uh, where is it uh, oh LOD settings okay so LOD setting it's weird because you have this here which tells it you want custom stuff and then LOD settings and then the LODs are all going to appear between these two which is kind of odd I don't get why they did that you don't want to auto compute um, there is a way down here let's see where is it but there is something where you can tell it when it's auto computing that uh, it's a small object or it's a big object and so it will adjust the um, LODs accordingly I uh, don't see it anyway so LOD setting so you want to auto compute new no. right so then you're going to so you want uh, generally three is good enough you don't really need much more than that apply settings and it'll produce the LODs in the middle here so we have our screen size how big it's going to be in there how many triangles it's going to be it's going to be 100 percent of the triangles when it's at LOD zero um, actually there is a way that you can just reduce it in general right um, we're never going to be that's all the other stuff yeah we're never going to be this far away from this guy uh, let's go back to uh, just the one LOD apply changes all right so we don't really need a lot of LODs because we're never going to be changing distance on this particular object. So let's do it this way. Percentage of triangles in the LOD zero. Uh, let's go with 40 and apply changes. Oh, all right. There's something else you want to look at. Up here in this corner is extremely important you can see the triangle size right how many triangles it was and now what it is so it went to 20 it was 20,000 I'll set it back to what it was before 100 apply changes right so there it is 20,000 that's a lot of triangles So now at 30% uh, apply changes joke, goes down to 6,000 it's a huge drop right and it's not a huge change in the actual bed itself so you're not going to notice much that it's going to be different and then you save it out All right, so go up here save it out so now I have a 6,000 vertices mesh rather than a 20,000 vertices mesh let's close that out so now so now that bed is going to be a lot easier for drawing so you say woo, break green right nice all right so we go back down to the statistics thing so I would go through and I would click on triangles and I would click on the size of the material because you can select materials it's like all objects yeah. primitive stats all right mm, texture stats here we go so textures so you can see the normal max dimensions right uh, max dimensions is not so important um, but the current dimension is so you can see I have a lot of things in here that are being used in my file that are 4,000 like on a tree stump you know, so that is going to cost CPU or GPU it's going to cost milliseconds which you don't want so I'm going to go down here and that's just the roughness Dunk. so now I go down to the roughness and I click on this and of course it opens up that giant window right? and then I go over here and I set do, 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 where are you here this one here to like four because it's gonna be dunk you can see how small it gets and so here I went from now it's 256 huge difference it was 4,000 now it's 256 big jump and, uh, go from zero which it was, right? It's huge. You go to four, boink, and now it's tiny. So 
this is what you want coming into your file. I save that out. That's my roughness. Go back in here, right? And of course, because this is all part of the same thing, it's probably I didn't go through any of these. Hey, so yeah, this is huge, right? And you don't really need that on a for dunk. Save that out. Right? I can go through each of these and find out where my problem is, right? So this height map, put it on four. Do -do -do. And uh, yeah, four. I mean, if it's fully rough, I'm probably not using a lot of these, but just because I want to be safe, don't want them called in by accident. All right, save on. There we go. There's a refresh. Oh, here is refresh. So now I still have some 4,000s to worry about. Yeah, so I have a lot of 4,000s that I still have to worry about. So I would have to go through all of these and check all of them to make sure that each of these are dropped down. And so what I did in my new file, uh, everything is like um, 1,000 if it's a big set, and most of them are like 512 or smaller. So I can keep all of those dimensions of all of those textures being called in to a minimum, extreme minimum. All right, so you can see your textures and you can do primitives right so you can see your static mesh which is awesome and so you can see the size of the static mesh and you can go through and find so yeah so this thing is really really helpful your textures and your primitives are the two that you're going to be jumping back and forth between right so that's a statistics bar and that is extremely extremely helpful number two in extremely helpful is go up here to Share complexity again. So we have our lighting complexity, we have our light map density, we have our shader uh, light overlap, stationary light overlap. All right, shader complexity is one that I normally stick in just to make sure everything is looking good. Shader complexity and quads is also extremely important. So you can see here oh, there's a lot of red, and this red is bad. Red is very bad. Red means that uh, you're model is way too high for the texture that's going on it uh, so let's click on one of these trees here red 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 right and you can see these guys are not right so they look good so but this guy here I'm gonna go over and click on tree stump and then I'm gonna go over to browse to asset and then it'll show up down here at the bottom there's my tree stump and double click. All right, so now I go in here and I find what is going on with the. Uh, where's the model? Here's the model. All right, so model is here. It's not going to be a texture because it's the quad problem. So I'll go into model. So now I'm here and I am looking at 3,000 triangles for this guy. So I will want him to be reducing. Um, more as he gets smaller. So let's do triangles. Let's do 50%. See if that makes any difference. So now he's got 50%. And we go back here. And you can still see he's got redness. If I get really far away, does he change? No. It could be his texture. Is that it? Is he set on? He should be fully rough. He's not fully rough, so let's put him on fully rough. Dunk. All right, there we go. So now he's happy. But I don't like red. Anything that's red is bad. And you can see it stops being red when you get really close, but it's very red when it's very far away. And I still think that that has something to do with the uh, model because a lot of the more simplified models don't have that problem. Right, yeah, okay, so anyway, let's go to the model and say, let's say I want this to look a little nicer. So I'm going to go over here to my LODs. Uh, okay, so auto compute. No, I don't want auto computing. And I want custom guys. And I want, uh, say, three LODs on this dude. Apply. All right, so then there they are. So now this guy starts off at the 30%, which I assigned him. Now my LOD1. LOD2, um, this number here is telling you when. 
you see 29% here. This number here is telling you when it is going to switch over to the next LOD. All right, so LOD one, screen size. LOD two screen size, so you're gonna make this like point zero five and make this like, uh, I don't know, point, uh, let's make this six, right? And then this to be zero five. Right. So now is if it's at one, it's gonna be this many triangles. If it's this, it's gonna be this many triangles. So let's see reduction settings. Reduction settings. Alright, so it's fifty percent of what it was before. Now this is weird because if you don't touch these, it will be fifty percent of thirty percent. And this will be twenty five percent of fifty percent. But if you touch them, suddenly it becomes of the whole. So I will jump from 30% to 50%, so it'll get more detail when I go further away. I don't know why it happens, but as soon as you touch it, it's doing that. So I'm gonna go down to, let's say, 15% here, and then here I will go down to, let's say, 5%. All right, apply changes. So now all of these are set up like that. So now when I look at my guy, so now it's at LOD zero, which is the full LOD. As soon as it gets to Right, uh, 0.6, right, 0.5, pink, it changes, right? So 0.6, it changes over. So this is LOD1. You can see it's it's a bit of a pop. You don't want that pop if you're going to be seeing this up close. And so you would refine your reduction so that it looks nice. When it gets like this far away, you don't really care, right? It, it pops, it pops. Right, so this one here is 0.05. Bink. All right, so now it's at LOD2. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, no one's going to notice that change from that far away. And besides, in my game, this is going to be covered up with everything. Now, one of the things in VR is that the size that you see it here is not the size that it's going to be inside your goggles. It's always going to be a lot smaller than what you think it's going to be. So. I would normally have my LED switch here, and this would be pretty close in front of you in actual VR. So even though this looks like it's really far away, like it's 50, 60 meters away, it's actually only like maybe eight meters away in VR. So for me to switch to like the little one going to 0.5, something like this, you know, it would still be somewhat noticeable because you'd see it out, it'd be like maybe 100 meters away. So something to think about. All right, so that is the model there. Now I went through and I reduced all the models for all the trees because I found that the draw calls on those were going crazy. So each um, each of my plates here, make these tiles for the runner. Uh, get printed out, boom, 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 and each of these have like 15 trees on them. You can see them all here, these guys. So each of these trees is going to be a draw call. So, wait, so here's a tile, and so when I'm on this tile, there's lots of trees, and then I click on the tile, find the tile, and I go in here. So it's a starter tile. So the way it looks is like this, right? So this is one of my tiles, and each time I make a change these trees are gonna jump around. So let's say I select this thing here. And you can see all the trees bah, 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 changing all over the place. Now the reason that they're changing all over the place is because I have them set up in a construction strip. So I'm printing out this many and this many. So the way I did it here was that the player runs through the middle. And so I want a lot of density on the ends to make it look like more of a forest on both sides and then have some scattered areas in the middle because I want some trees here but I don't want them to be covering up all the obstacles that the player is going to be jumping over because there are some big obstacles. So more density on the outer edges. So that's what this construction script does. It does trees one and two. So here actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the minimum to be five and the maximum to be eight. And here I'm going to also increase that five to seven. All right, so now I have less trees that are going to be printing out each time this thing loads up. Say so less trees, which means smaller draw call, which means faster milliseconds. 
right? And people are probably not going to notice this that much. I mean, it would be nice to have it as a super dense forest, but since people are playing on a Vive, which has like 8 megs of RAM, uh, you're not going to be able to pull that off, right? So now, going in here and looking at my trees, I did the material, right? So material is, is it fully rough or, ooh? Right, so yeah, so this one is already signed to fully rough, and you can see I have the normal on there. That's why it's showing up as bright green. Now I can click on this. There we go. Click on this, go here. And now I can go and see how big this is. I do not need a thousand, a 1K image for each of those trees. So, of course, because my thing is small, I'm going to go to three. 128 by 128 is plenty for how far away we are from those trees. And I will do the bark as well. Let's go down to two on the bark. So we have a 256 on the normals and that. All right, so that will reduce a lot of the draw calls on that. And now I will go in and I will, where is the tree itself? Bink. All right, so now I'll go in in the tree and you can see, this one tree right now is using 1200 triangles and that is way too many for how many trees are going to be on screen because if you look at this here right the player is going to be here there's going to be at least six tiles in front of them and like four tiles behind that is a lot of trees that are going to be displayed and so that's a lot of triangles especially when you're talking about a thousand e let's say there's 40 of them you know, I mean you're talking like a lot all right, so I'm going to reduce that down. So only the ones that are up close are going to be like this. And so I'm going to change the percentage and then say to 40 and see if that makes a difference. All right. All right, so this is 40%. It looks almost identical and no one's really going to care because this is a VR game. So I mean, having the stylized bends in there is going to be not a big deal. So and then, now I went down to 500 triangles and this is only the ones that are going to be up close. So now. I can of course do what I did before, custom, and uh, where is it, auto compute, new, no. and I want three LODs on these, I'll apply changes, and now I have my LODs that I want, right, so here's 30%, and this one here, I'm going to go down to 12%, and I'm going to go down here to like 5%, okay, apply changes, and let's see, this one screen size is one. It looks like a matchstick, a burnt matchstick. Now that's going to be my furthest away one, right? But I'm going to go about here. And so that's 0.26. And so screen size, I'm going to go to point, uh, 0.25, all right? And then here, I'm going to go to point, oh, 0.05, I think. So, oh, whoops. Oh, 0.05. All right, so now still looks like a tree and you're not going to notice okay. just a little bit of a bink a couple limbs disappear that's it and then when it gets really 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 small then it goes into matchstick mode right so the ones that are going to be super far away not going to be a problem anymore okay. so this is going to increase the FPS a lot so you can see the ones out here are being reduced way out here. All right, and I get closer to them and suddenly they have branches that stick off a little bit more. But again, in my game, you're gonna be focusing on what's in front of you because there's a lot of shooting and ducking and dodging. You're not gonna be looking at these trees and saying, oh, look, there's a LOD on that tree. And so, yeah, because these are, let's go into here. There are two types of trees that are being used. And so I will go into both of these trees and do the same exact thing to this one. So this one's using 800 triangles. Let's go down to 40% of that and see what happens. Bink. All right, yeah, so not a big deal. So now it went down to 339. So a huge drop, huge drop, right? And then if I add more LODs in there, then it's going to make it even easier for all that stuff to move along a lot quicker. So that right there just working on the tiles themselves. This is not messing with a lot of the innards. I just increase the speed of the entire game like 10 frames per second. 
I mean, I went from 70 to 80 easily with just this one little change. And then, oh, right, there was one last thing that I did here. Right. In my feverish reducing of all polygons and things, you can see this fence again. So the fence is now only, I think it's like four polygons now. So here on the side, you can see this fence has got holes in it, right? But this right next to it does not. So this next to it is actually just a cube. So I just posted the texture of the fence on a cube and just ran it down. So instead of having to worry about LODs, I just decided, you know what? You know, it's no one's going to be looking left and right too much. And even if they are, it's dark. And since that's gray, it's just going to look like everything else. So, yeah, it's actually just four sides to it now with a texture on it. That's it. And this one here is slightly more. So in last time it was like over a thousand polygons. Now it's like six. <laughs> I think it's... Let's see if I can uh, browse to asset and fence viewport. All right. All right. So this is the seriously reduced one. So now it's just a cube. It's literally all it is is a cube. And so it is 12 triangles. So I went from over let's see 1200 I think is what the original one was all right yeah here's here's the original all right so this is the original and so this one is 1852 triangles 2500 vertices right and this 12 triangles 1800 and 12 now, oh, that there, just by that little thing, saves me a lot of CPU power, right? This one here, which is pretty close to the original because, I mean, it still has the slats in the middle, the missing spaces in the middle, right? This one here, 120. That's it, just 120. And it has the 3D effect on it. So, I mean, you can see there's poles in the back and it's wood. Same as this guy here. It's not as super pretty, but I mean, it doesn't need to be. So I mean, no one is really going to care. The difference between this and this is minimum. And yet 1800 uh, triangles and this one here is 120. And this one is 12. So yeah, and no one's going to see this from behind anyway. Reduce, reduce, reduce. Always just keep reducing. And of course, in the LODs, you can also go in and you can set them so that, say, LOD 2 or LOD 3 does not cast shadows. So you can have it casting shadows on just the LOD 0. And as soon as it gets far away, it stops casting shadows. So you save a lot of uh, GPU right there. And that shadows is a huge, huge bump in your frames per second if you need that. Uh, this whole thing right now, I mean, a lot of these are just simple, simple objects at this point, just to keep that frame rate up. And I'm hitting now uh, 120 to 140 with all these updates and up these changes. So. so I go in here and I right click and what I want to do is I want to scroll down here to size map. I'm going to zoom in on this one here. Uh, horde. Size map. Size map is extremely nice to use. Okay. Bink. Okay. So my size map is huge. I like to keep it the size of the screen so I can see every little detail. So what this does is it shows everything that's inside the file. And it shows it in little compartmentalized pieces so it tells you what each piece uh, and how much it's using in memory and you can jump back and forth to memory and uh, loading time so how much disk space it's going to take up as well as how much um, memory it's going to take up so disk space and memory are going to be different things that's up here in this corner here so you can choose whether you want it to be disk space or 
uh, say this size or memory size. Let's go memory size. So the memory of this one here, the biggest one, okay, so everything in this level is taking up 666 megabytes. Right? And I like to keep all of my blueprints, all of my characters, all of my obstacles, everything under 100 if possible. I like to keep it under 50. So you can see over here, my Uzi blueprint is only 14 megs. Right? So yeah, the things on the right are the things that are using up less memory and the things on the left are taking up more memory. So the further you go left, the more memory you're taking up. So you can see here, so this ax is only taking up 22. Uh, the Uzi is taking up 14. The, the cabin itself you know, is taking up 12 and it goes down. So all these, the smaller down at the bottom corner, uh, the better it is for you. The bigger and more to the left it's going to be, it's going to be more heavy. So you can see here this uh, door blueprint is uh, 500 megabytes, right? That is going to be taken up in your memory. And you can click on that and you can go into just that, right? So it goes in like this. And that will give you, again, a, a zoom in to show you what inside of this is taking up so much. So mother, of course, which is my controller for everything, uh, is taking up the most amount of memory. Um, and below that, let's click on mother and see what mother's doing. Okay, so mother is calling in the zombies. Okay, so here's the zombie tile. Oh, e one zombie over here is. You can't see that. Let's pull over here. So I got one zombie here, which is the giant zombie, and he's only called in once, so it's not a big deal that he's taken up a lot of memory. But he is 240 megs, which is a huge deal. The other zombies should be a lot smaller. Uh, let's see, where are, do I have any of those in here? No, most of the things that are taking up a lot. Oh, here we go. That's it. Uh, it's a giant controller. Do, do, do. This is the Niagara for the giant zombie. So I'm not going to look at them. So this is the windmill blueprint. So it's 102 megabytes. And I would normally go through and I would reduce that a lot because I don't want one set on my thing taking up that much memory. So I can click on it now. And I can see what is taking up the most amount of memory. One of the textures is taking up 22. Another texture is taking up 22. So I would be able to click on these, and I would be able to find the. Oops. So I would be able to click on this, and I would be able to see browse to asset. And you go to that asset, and that is right here. And you can see, wow, that's huge. Uh, let's back to more. So yeah. That's why it was taking up so much space. It's a 4K texture. We don't need that. It's a, pretty much a smooth texture. So we can go down here to 256. And now that will be a lot better for me. You know, most likely, most likely, let's, see, uh, let's close that back down again. Most likely these guys are all doing the same thing. Yeah, all right, so bring them down. Right, so normally when you're inside of a folder, everything in the folder is something you forgot to mess with. Right, so now, go back up here. This windmill will not be taking up 102 megs. Right, so if I zoom out, zoom back in, windmill says still 100. No, all right, so I'll go over here to disk size and go back to, there's no refresh on this unfortunately, so then go back to memory and say look it's gone. Windmill, where are you windmill? Do 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 do, windmill, windmill, windmill. Ah, here that's one windmill. So yeah it's been reduced so far that I don't even see it anymore. Ah, here it is. 57 megs, right? So it went from 100 to 57 and we can see this texture is still using up a little bit of space uh, browse to asset. Go back here. Ah, and of course, yeah, it's the same area, right? So all of these, like I said, when you go into a folder, normally everything in that folder is going to be something that uh, has been forgotten. Because I will go in and I will check all of these to make sure that everything is doing what it's supposed to do when I'm normally doing this, not when I'm messing around like this All right so yeah so there's everything on that and of course let's see go in here and check on this see if he's doing fully rough he is alright so he's good alright close out some of these textures 
so yeah the um, size map is something that is extremely helpful going in there and checking out all of that stuff and this is just something that you need to do every few days I'd say like every three iterations you go in and recheck everything to make sure that all of your things are still optimized you know check the size map check the um, the statistics panel you know go through your different lighting so let's go memory size go to disk size and back to memory size pink yeah. so yeah so now he's down to 12 that windmill set went from over 100 down to 12 megabytes so that's a huge huge drop in the amount of memory that it's going to be using up yeah. So yeah, so going through and using the size map will help you out. You can check the model size, the memory size, and everything in there. I mean, it talks about the blueprint, how big your blueprint is. So here's the, the zombie controller, right? So the blueprint for the zombie controller is using up all of this, right? Because all of this is being called in there. And you can go in and check out all of this and make sure that all of it is working smoothly. So we did, uh, let's see, textures. Ooh, another big one. Reduce them down, right, to nothing, right. And then um, we did fully rough stuff, right. Um, we did LODs, which is reduction, and that helps out a lot. And I still need to do all of the different other fun stuff, like the uh, things that sense everything. But I'm going to have to go into my other file to do that. So I'm going to stop all this right now. Zombie. Hello, zombie. All right, so he's back. So more about him. So we go over to our zombie guy, and we click on the skeletal mesh. All right, so we want to go and find skeletal mesh. We click on that. We open the skeletal mesh up. So now we can actually go in here, and we can mess with the LODs of this guy as well, just like any other object. They can go in there and mess with them. Over here in the LODs, you can actually chop away more of his triangles. So just like you can with any other LOD, you can say, I want, you know, like he's got three LODs for this one guy. And you can say, I want them to be really, really small. You can have even the LOD zero to be. So here's the percentage of triangles. So my basic, my best uh, LOD, right? My highest level of um, triangles here is going to be at um, percentage of triangles is 0.05. All right, so that's really, really tiny. Okay, so he has 3,600 triangles for him. That is a lot, especially considering there's so many of them running around. I'd like to reduce that, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. I probably will eventually, but I mean, he's pretty good for now. I mean, he's doing okay. So I'm not sure how far I'm gonna reduce him anymore. One of the things that's very seldom mentioned is the fact that you can actually LOD this guy his bones as well. So not just the geometry itself. You can actually go over here and you can mess with the bones. And that's one of the things I did on the LOD zero. So I left it so that even at his highest LOD, he has no fingers. So his fingers are stuck in this default pose. So the Unreal is never having to think about those joints and those bones and moving things around. And that's over here in the um, sections. No. LOD info. Here we go. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. So here, bones to remove. That's the one. So you can actually go in here. And again, this is LOD zero. So if you have high end machine or high end characters or whatnot, and you want their fingers to move when they're up close, that's fine. But as soon as they get to a certain distance away, you're never going to notice that. So you can actually start removing stuff. And you can see here, I just removed a lot of stuff. So you just keep adding and you select them from the bones and you paste it over here. So you can actually select any bone that you want in this, which is kind of cool. So all his index fingers, his ring fingers, all that is all been removed. So you can do LODs on the bones, which is super helpful. So yeah, his toes don't have it. Uh, I removed the, the eyelids, the, the jaw, um, anything that I could remove on him that he doesn't need. I mean, because he basically only needs his spine and his arms to normal, All right? So <clears throat> it um, this floor tile, basically it starts off, gets its information here, runs through all of this, 
and then after it's done getting all its basic information of where it is in the world and uh, its tile number and what it's supposed to produce based on how far along the player is then it jumps up here and it starts randomly selecting different obstacles so all those obstacles are based on how far the the players progress. So if they're a thousand meters, they get the ones up here. If they're three thousand meters, they get almost all of them. If they're five thousand meters, they get all of them. Right. So it's going to be selecting from one to seventy. I think it is. Yeah, it's seventy. But in the past, I unfortunately had some of these functions, like these here, which basically tell it, okay, I'm above this. Um, my tile number is greater than or less than this, so I'm here. And it was checking that each time it would spawn a new obstacle. And it really didn't need to do that. It only needed to do it once, because then it already knows what its parameters are. So by taking that from here and moving it here, it's a small thing. But since these tiles are running through this every couple of seconds, uh, a new tile is spawned every six seconds, and then it runs through this six times. So if it can run through this once rather than running through it six times, then that again will help you get better frames per second. Now something to allow you to see your frames per second, which is really nice, is a this is a um, app from the Steam Store which is called FPS VR and you launch that before you launch your game and what it does is it gives you this little window here and you can see this window while you're playing in VR and it'll tell you what your GPU is doing, what your CPU is doing, uh, how many lost frames you have. Uh, it also, of course, tells you um, your left and right controller's battery level, but you don't really need that. How many dropped frames you have, uh, how much RAM you're using, how many uh, of your um, CPU um, threads you're using. So it's super, super helpful for figuring out uh, how, where you're losing stuff. And it's more clear than just looking at a single track. Yes, exit. So, but yeah, so you launch this before you launch your game, and it'll be in the game, and you can have it fixed, or you can have it floating around attached to your head. Uh, you can have it so that it renders when you record the game, or it doesn't render when you record the game. I mean, there's like all kinds of options in there, so it's super, super helpful. And I think, I think that's it. All right, so anyway, I hope this helps. As a uh, disclaimer, I am not a super high-level programmer. I am just a dude who's learning Unreal. And these are the methods uh, that I found to increase my frames per second, uh, reduce the draw calls, uh, reduce the load on the system. I'm sure there's going to be some programmers out there that say that's not the right way to do it, uh, or there are better ways to do it. And you know, if you did it in C++, but I don't know. C++. So I know blueprints and that's what I learned and a lot of this is from watching videos on YouTube. Now I'll try to leave some links below for ones that have more detail on specific things. Um, but a lot of this is also just me trial and error having 60 zombies running around or 80 trees there and me reducing one thing or reducing another thing to see which has the biggest impact. And I know it reduces the load um, I don't know if it's going to cause some other problems, but it hasn't so far. So everything in here seems to be working exactly the way I want. Um, again, there might be a better way to do it, but I don't know that method, and I haven't seen anyone talk about those methods. So if you do know better ways of doing this, you can leave comments down below um, or make your own video either way. It's fine. Okay.